High Adventure. In tonight's story, Wings of Gold, Ron Evans brings us a drama set high above the jungles of South America. Another drink, sir. Whiskey soda. Gracias. Will that be all, sir? Here. Yeah. Keep this sealed envelope to the pilot. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. We're not allowed to communicate with the pilot during flight. You'd better, Querida. If you want to get back to the ground in one piece. What do you mean? I mean that this briefcase on my knee contains enough explosive to blast us all to eternity. Now, will you take this note to the pilot? Yeah, what is it, Wendy? There's a nut among the passengers. He looks like a Peruvian or Chilean. Well, most of them are. No, I mean he wants to, to hijack the plane, I think. You think? Well, he says he's got a bomb in his briefcase. Now, keep calm, dear. Uh, did you point out that he'll blow himself up along with it? Oh, no, but he gave me this note. You read it, Reg. Uh, it doesn't say what he wants or anything. We're to keep on course and await his instructions. I see. Okay, I'd better call Caracas and tip him off. Yeah, uh, San Diego, too. What should I do? Uh, you carry on as though nothing's happened. We'll deal with it from here. Well, he'll either want to come up here or he'll give you another message. Look, there's nothing to panic about at this stage. In the meantime, just ignore him. Oh, it's not going to be easy. Right, so it'll keep Wendy cool. But what are we going to do? He'll keep on course, as he says, and just wait. I want to know what he's up to. Well, I'm going off to see what this blighter looks like. You don't mind. No, help yourself, Rich. Just don't make it too damned obvious. I was a passenger on that fated plane. It was flight 141 of Caravel Airways en route from Caracas to Santiago in Chile. The date, August 8th, 1961. In those days, a plane hijack was a rarity and not taken as seriously as they were a decade later. Up to the time when Rich Howard, the co-pilot, passed down the aisle between the seats... None of the passengers was aware of anything amiss. It was a small plane carrying 33 passengers, mostly businessmen and their families. The space between the seats was very narrow. A nod passed between Wendy Lamont, the air hostess, and Reg, as she pinpointed the man with the briefcase. As he passed the would-be hijacker, Reg was walking sideways, his back to him. But as he came level... He swung about with a quick movement. Oh, Hit the man on the head with a major blow. The man groaned and fell forward unconscious. Some of the passengers stood up in alarm. Please, please, everybody remain calm. Now, this man tried to cause trouble, but it's all right now. Now, Wendy, help me to carry him out to the baggage compartment. No, no, let me search him first for a weapon. Hey, you, sir. I, uh... Can I be of assistance? Uh, would you go aft and open the rear door? You'll see some lengths of rope hanging from a hook. Now, would you bring it so I can tie this fellow up? I quickly got the rope and helped the co-pilot to tie the man securely. The still unconscious figure was then dumped in the aft baggage compartment. The excitement was over. Or so we thought. Ah, the emergency's over. I swatted him like a fly. Yeah, so Wendy's just told me. Quite the conquering hero, huh? I was a paratrooper during the war. Yeah, what about the guy's explosive briefcase? Oh, it's an amateurish attempt, I must say. Four hand grenades wired up into a booby. How do you know that? I defused it. There's nothing to worry about now. Oh, boy, I'm glad of that. Here, I want you to take the controls for a spell. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. I've been wondering, is there anything special about this flight that I should know? Uh, special? Well, um, 
An important passenger, for instance. Oh, all ordinary people, as far as I know. And cargo? Oh, just mail and a few boxes of general goods. Uh. I checked them on board myself. Um, why all the questions, anyway? I'm just puzzled why that fellow did what he did. Yeah, I was curious about that myself. Don't you remember me telling you to do nothing until we know? And there you go and knock him cold. Well, he'll be coming too soon. I'll go and ask him later. Uh, Never mind, Reg. I'll do that. I want to take a peek at him anyway. Uh, Here's the baggage compartment key. Give him my regards. I saw Captain Summers walk down the aisle between the seats, nodding and smiling to the passengers. He unlocked the baggage room door and entered, closing it behind him. Ten minutes later, he emerged with the would-be hijacker right behind him. Captain Summers had his hands behind his head. I couldn't see the hijacker's gun, but it didn't take much guesswork to realize it was prodded into the pilot's back. Stand still, Captain, while I talk to these good people. Can you all hear me? Yes. Please, please be quiet. I have something to tell you. I am not a murderer, and I do not want to be. If you all keep to your seats and make no attempt to stop me, you have nothing to fear at all. But the first sign of resistance will force me to shoot dead your captain. I hope that is quite clear. So, please sit back and enjoy the rest of your flight. Thank you. Gracias. Keep still in your seats while I pass by with the captain. Do not attempt to stop me. We knew the hijacker meant what he said. So we sat motionless and helpless as the two men passed up the aisle to where the hostess stood, white-faced and nervous. The hijacker smiled reassuringly at her. You please continue with your duties as though nothing has happened. Yes. Captain, shall we go to the cockpit? Well, what was he up to? I was going to... Shut up, Ranch. He's got a gun in my back. And I shall use it. Please, keep to your controls. Well, how the hell did he... Never mind that now. Head into your seat, Capitan. Gracias. Okay. But look, I... I think it's time you told us what this is all about. It will do no harm. Soon you will be passing over an area of dense forest. I know it well. It is the place where I want you to make a crash landing. Crash land in dense bush? You must be joking. You will follow my instructions. Look, I'm telling you, we'll all be killed. No. One or two, perhaps. These plans are strongly built and can take the impact. Captain Summers, you are a highly skilled pilot. I know you can do it. But Skipper, he's crazy. No. No, I'd say he's desperate. Just take it easy, Rich. It can be done. I see. If we're well strapped into our seats and the fuel switched off before we hit, I reckon we'll make it. I, I still think it's a mad idea. Anyway, what good will it do? That is my business, huh? I have a good reason. Now, please, no more talking. Captain, you will take over the controls from your co-pilot, and I will let you know when we approach our destination. this chart, you see? Where the river bends, just beyond, huh? huh? You see this uh, triangle? Yeah. The plane must land right in the center. So. Okay, okay. It'll be easy to find. You won't even have to change course. Reduce altitude when you see the river bend. Assuming we come out of this alive, what is going to happen to the passengers? I shall put your radio out of service before we land, of course, so you will not be able to signal for help. I see. But if you study this chart carefully, you will see a trading settlement here, here, about 50 miles to the east. Uh-huh. Two or three days' walk, if you follow the river. A riverboat calls in at the settlement every weekend. No doubt it will be big enough to carry you all down the river to, uh, to Caliento. Huh? So you've got it all worked out, eh? Very well worked out, senor. Hey, look, I can see the river now. Ah, bueno, please. Please, reduce your altitude to 3,000 feet. I think that if the passengers had realized what was about to happen, 
There would have been a full-scale panic. But from my seat, I could see we were losing altitude. A fact which increased my anxiety. However, not knowing the route, I thought that perhaps we were going to land at a small airport. Especially when the hostess announced... Will passengers please extinguish their cigarettes and fasten their seatbelts? Thank you. Hey, that is strange. We must be going to land. I can't see anything ahead. It must be a very small airport. A safe place for that hijacker to make a getaway, I suppose. That's odd. The engines have cut out. I wonder. There was little time left to wonder. Before I was trying to panic, trees appeared close under the wing, and then... Treetops, shearing off the wings and engines, dipped its front into the dense foliage and came to rest on its side on the springy jungle floor. Birds screeched with alarm, monkeys chattered from the branches high above. It was a miracle landing, thanks to the skill of Captain Summers. The passengers who had remained conscious throughout the brief ordeal helped out the less fortunate ones. Amazingly, there were no deaths and few injuries, three broken arms and two broken legs. In the cockpit, co-pilot Reg Howard came to and saw his colleague, Captain Summers, who's fully conscious, but still strapped in his seat. My head feels like it's about to fall off. You all right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'm okay. Where's our friend with the gun? Made himself scarce. I blacked out when we hit, and he was gone when I came round. Are you all right in there? Hi, hi, Wendy. You're smiling, I see. Oh, smiling with relief. Uh, <laughs> hey, have you seen anything of the guy who made us land here? Oh, no, I've been busy helping the passengers. What happened to him? Well, he scooted before the skipper and I came, too. How, how bad is it back there? Well, here's a surprise. It's not too bad at all. Three or four broken limbs and dozens of bruises... One passenger is a doctor, That's Dr. Right. Carilla. He's tending to them. Well, just as soon as he's finished patching him up, we better make some stretches. We've got one hell of a long walk ahead of us. Uh, what a crazy oh, oh. situation to be in. Well, did you find anything of use in the baggage compartment, Reg? Well, there's three rifles and ten boxes of ammo. Uh -huh. At least we won't go hungry. Oh, yeah. yeah I, uh, I know about them. Uh, you can leave them behind, Reg. Right. But Wendy's got plenty of food to last us through the trip. But we'll need them, Skipper. This is pretty rough country. They don't belong to us. What kind of logic is that? Here we are, stranded in the Venezuelan jungle, and you're worried about the ownership of three rifles? Look, we're going to need those. Well, do as you like, then. It's just that we've got enough to carry. You know, I've got a good mind to track down that bleeding hijacker before we leave. We can't be far away. Uh, uh, this is no time for vendettas, Reg. We've got enough to worry about. Besides that, the sooner we start out, the better. I've organized the able-bodied men. They know what to do on the march. At the moment, they're cutting up three branches and fashioning weapons. In this part of the world, that might prove necessary. Talking about weapons, here. You can take this other rifle. Ah. And uh, here's three boxes of ammo to go with it. Good, laddie. That's just what we need. How long before we're ready to leave? Oh, ten, fifteen minutes. The stretchers and food carries are ready. We've made up a rota for turns on the cartridge. Uh, you're quite an organizer, huh, Mr. McLeod? Ex-Colonel on the Black Watch, you know. Spot of discipline and organization, and we can all walk the way down to Santiago. Yeah. Well, I'm in no mind to try that. The river settlement's far enough. All is ready now. Good. You hear that, Captain Summers? We're ready to go when you are. It 
it was just after 11 in the morning when we moved off. The able-bodied men took the lead and the rear of the column. The women and children were herded three abreast in the middle and shepherded by the hostess, Wendy. We made good progress and stopped for a break about two when we reached the river bank. Captain Summer said he was going to take a stroll along the bank. And that was the last we saw of him. Well, have any luck, Tom? No, oh, nothing, I'm afraid. He went about a mile up that way and shouted our heads off. He must have heard of it if he's still, uh, still, uh, still alive, you mean. Yes, I wonder. Anything could have happened. An alligator, quicksands, there are all sorts of possibilities. We should never have left him go alone. Look, Tom, he insisted. Just sit down a minute, Tom. Uh, I, I want to get a few thoughts straight. I'll have to start pushing on soon. With or without Captain Summers. You know, something stinks to high heaven. I beg your pardon? Something stinks. As Summers would have said, this whole damned setup's phony. Take this, this hijacker, for instance. We never found out his reason for ditching the plane here. Now, well, why? Is it because we're close to the Colombian border? Perhaps he was a criminal trying to flee the country. Yes, yes, but there's easier ways of doing it than this. Well, why didn't he have us ditch the plane the other side of the border, then? Oh, to avoid being charged with air piracy over Colombian territory, I suppose. Air piracy. Yes, now, that's a thought. What is? For some reason, Captain Summers didn't let me see the cargo manifest. Now, now say... So we were carrying something of great value. Uh, used currency, gold, precious stones. Now, all the hijacker would have to do is somehow get it over the river into Colombia, and he's home and dry. Well, that's a possibility. But could he do it by himself? And then again, he would have had to have inside information to know what the plane was carrying. Summers. Yes. Yes, Captain Summers is the answer. I'll bet a year's pay that he's heading back to the plane. That flight is in league with the hijacker. Yes. Yes, Tom, it all fits. Oh, that seems a little far-fetched. Look, I've been puzzled by one or two things. Now, that hijacker was tied up and locked in the baggage compartment. Now, how did he manage to get free and overpower a big man like Summers? Aye. And find a gun, too. Right. It's damn fishy. Another thing. Summers was too cooperative. Look, no belligerence, no indignation, nothing. It's just not like him. It's, it's out of character. Then, after we crashed, he didn't want us to take the guns along. Why? Because either he needed them, or he didn't want us to be armed, just in case we stumbled to his game. By Jove, laddie, I think you're right. And when I wanted to try and hunt down this hijacker chap, he stopped me. He said we had enough to worry about. Yes. Yes, it all adds up to the one thing. Except for... Well, uh... Why didn't he disappear with his pal after the crash? Why continue their pretense? He didn't want to burn his boats. Well, say something goes wrong. Summers can always walk into a trading settlement and say he got lost. He'll get back his job without a stain in his character. Aye, of course. Yes. Well, we better push on. You can report your suspicions to your company when you get back. Not flaming likely. No. No, Summers isn't going to get away with this, believe me. I'm going back to that plane. That's a bit risky all on your own. I'll trot along with you. No, no, Tom. You'd better stay with the passengers. Nonsense. We're at the river now. All they have to do is to follow it. That's no problem at all. Anyway, if we're quick, we can nip back to the plane, do what we have to, and catch up with the others before they reach the settlement. I found Clancy, Rodriguez, and Sarizzo to be excellent men and capable of leading the column. <laughs> all right, you win. You go and organize them, and I'll wait here for you. We made quick time along the trail back to the crashed plane. As it turned out, Reg, our suspicions were accurate. The impact has made it very hard to open. Yeah, that's right. I was trying before you came back. See, it is bent. Yeah. Here, use this broken branch as a lever. It's coming. Bueno. Yeah. yeah, that's it. There. You see those wooden boxes? Get inside and push them out to me. Uh, uh, six of them? Yeah, that's right. 
and each weighing a hundred pounds. A quarter of a million dollars in gold, my friend. We can retire in luxury. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's five o'clock. It'll be dark in another 90 minutes. What time did you tell him to pick us up? Any moment now. We will be safely over the border before sundown. Good. How much are you paying for the helicopter? A thousand American dollars and no questions asked. He'll take us all the way to Moronoro. Oh, that's great. Uh, just as long as no one gets wind of what's in these boxes. Not yet, anyway. Shh. What? Keep your voice down. What's the matter? There is someone over there. I saw a reflection. <laughs> oh, forget it. It's your nerves, Raoul. Relax and... Both take... of you. Put up your hands and stand clear of the plane. So what the... Quick, your gun. It is your friend, the co-pilot. Hey, somewhere over there in the trees. Keep your head down. I'm waiting for him to shoot again. But once we've pinpointed his position, just blast away. Unfortunately, Ridge Howard's warning shot had the opposite effect to what he intended. Instead of surrendering, Summers and his ally grabbed their weapons and ducked under the fuselage. We waited, hoping they would make the next move. Now, if you can wait here and cover me, I'll work my way round to their rear. It might be better if we wait a little while longer. There's a chance we might talk them into something. What's that noise? What? Did you hear it, eh? It's a plane of some description. Perhaps it's a search plane. Can't see anything from here, but... Oh, oh it is. it's no ordinary plane. Not swishing noise. It's a helicopter. A helicopter? In this part of the world. All right. There it is. It's got to land in the clearing. Yes. Yes, it's from over the border. You, you see the Colombian military insignia? Aye, I do. I'll be damned. So that's how they're planning to get their loot away. You can't very well shoot up a Colombian aircraft without proof that it's acting illegally. It's landing illegally in Venezuela. Right? It might be a rescue craft. We don't know, do we? Perhaps the plane was seen to crash here. Yes, yes, it could be, right? But anyway, let's just see what happens. We saw the helicopter hover over the wreckage and then come to land in the clearing. A man in military uniform climbed out. And Summers and his colleague ran towards him, each staggering under the weight of the heavy box. Summers passed his burden to the newcomer and ran back for another. And then we knew for sure that this was no rescue operation. consider what to do. The six moving bots had been loaded on the helicopter. The pilot took his place behind the controls and the other two slipped in beside him. Look, it's not too late to pick them off. We will be doing the right thing, though. Yes, yes. Just think back to this morning. We could have had all been killed. They were willing to kill us to satisfy their own greed. Now, isn't that right? Women, kids, the whole damn lot of us. Very well, so you found justification. But it's too late. They're off, but not clear. Now, aim with me. See that rounded shape just behind the fuselage insignia? Right. That's a fuel tank. Right. Are you ready? Right, Dutch. Pump the shots in. Now! Great heavens Get alive. Get your head down. There are bits flying all over the place. It was an appalling sight. The helicopter exploded in a bright ball of flame... And what was left crashed into the jungle for hundreds of yards all around. None of its three occupants could possibly have survived. We made a quick check of the cargo manifest and found that our plane had been secretly carrying a cargo of bullion to Santiago. It was in the afternoon of the next day when we finally caught up with the others. And two days more before we reached the safety of the trading settlement. adventure is produced by Anne Freed 